My 10 recent reads rank from worst to best. Yes, I can't believe it's already been two months since this year started, but so far I have read 10 books and I'm very, very near to the end of Speaking Bones, which is a massive book. So I kind of read 11, but I'll only include 10 books in this list. And as usually we do in this channel, I'll rank my recent reads from the worst to the best. So let's get into it. Now on 10th spot, which will be without a doubt one of the biggest disappointments of the year, because this book started so incredibly. I thought it was going to be a new favorite of mine, but that is going to be Fairy Tale by Stephen King. Now we read this book together for the Viking Book Club and I'm telling you, like I'm not even joking, the first half of Fairy Tale is arguably some of Stephen King's best writing to date. I was absolutely immersed. I loved every single page. When I put the book down, I just couldn't wait to get back to the book. Now Fairy Tale starts as this beautiful coming of age story of this young lad that then befriends this old man. There is a dog and the dog is great. And this young lad and this older man starts to form a relationship and it's so well done. It's so beautiful and it is exactly what Stephen King does the best. Coming of age and I was like, Stephen King, he still got it. The first 250 pages ish of that book were just incredible. Like I, I love them so much. Some of King's best writing to date. But as you know from the title, this book is called Fairy Tale. And then suddenly around 40% into this book, the narrative just totally changes and we go from a beautiful coming of age story to a weird generic fairy tale story that just wasn't interesting. I literally have no idea what Stephen King was thinking when he wrote this book. It literally feels like two separate stories and the weird thing is that Stephen King spends so much time on getting you invested in this coming of age arc and story and then suddenly it's like nope that's done here's a f generic fairy tale it just didn't work. Oh. So disappointing. Okay, let's get on to spot number nine. On spot number nine is a book I didn't hate, I just felt a bit lukewarm on it, but that's also a book we read for the Wagon Book Club. It sounds like I'm only reading books that are generic, but in April we're reading Hyperion and I'm expecting to love it. I just can't wait. But never mind. on spot number nine, we have The Return of the Nights by Gregory Contaxis. He's actually a page of mine and this cover is beautiful. He sent it to me with beautiful sprayed edges. But yeah, if you enjoy classic fantasy, because this has a lot of like classic tropes, but it does also have some Greek mythology, then I would recommended this one. There's actually a, I think it's free, or there's at least a prequel novella you can read to get a taste of Contax's writing style. Now I think just my primary issues here is that I've probably read just too much classic fantasy and this felt quite tropey. And there's also some issues with some characters and stuff like that, but overall I didn't hate this book. It was a three star read for me, it just felt like average. But let's move on to spot number eight and we have a book that was massively popular last year and was published last year and that is God Killer by Hannah Kena. Now this was such a mixed reading experience for me. In some ways I loved loved this book, like the world building was fascinating. It kind of gave me Ghibli or Ghibli vibes if that makes any sense. And I thought it was just so clever and I also just the idea of this world, the idea of the story just really drew me in. But I just didn't find the characters that interesting. And if you know me, then you know I am very, very character driven. And I mean, the good thing is that this book isn't that long. And, and I just got a copy of book two. And there were definitely some things that really pulled me in with this book. I don't know. I'm so confused. It feels like it's slightly overhyped or definitely a bit overhyped in my opinion. But I also kind of want to know what happens next. So I don't know. If you read book two and got killer, let, let me know. But let's move on to spot number seven. On spot number seven, we have... The Autumn Republic by Brian McClellan. This is the third and final book in the Powder Mage. And I was a huge fan of the first two books. I thought they were very engaging, very interesting. It's like steampunk, kind of the grim dark fantasy. It also has like a murder mystery element to it. It has scheming gods, so many great things. It kind of reminded me of Age of Madness, but more focused on like battles and gods and stuff like that. And it just felt so unique. It felt so original. But my main issue with the third book is that it was just way too action packed. Like. It felt like every single chapter was just a battle scene or it's describing a part of a battle and also the plot just felt slightly disjointed. I'm not really sure what happened with the third book. I'm not saying it's bad. I did still have a great time with the third book and overall this trilogy is a definite, definite recommend for me, especially if you enjoy steampunk or if you want to check out steampunk. It's definitely one of the better trilogies I've read. And I'm definitely going to be reading some of Brian McClellan's other works because yeah, this was a great, great read. And the only real criticism I have of this trilogy is that the third book felt slightly disjointed with the plot and was just 
too action-packed. But nonetheless, I had a good time with this one. On spot number six, we have a self-published debut novel called The Elegy of a Fragmented Vineyard by Caden Love. I think that's how you pronounce the title. Now, I actually just randomly picked up this book. Like, I chatted with the author a couple of times. He seems super lovely. And if you enjoy political fantasy, so fantasy that doesn't really have dragons, doesn't really have lots of battles, but there's a lot of tension in factions and in how characters talk to each other and there's a big, big focus on the politics as I said but also dystopian elements. This book is set in a world where there's a kingdom that literally will harvest the organs from babies to gain magical abilities. So it's very, very dark, it's very, very dystopian. And I actually really enjoyed this one. I'm definitely gonna be continuing because there's so many great elements. I really enjoy the politics. The other thing I'll say is that it was a bit info dumpy or exposition heavy in parts. But as a debut, I found this to be incredibly ambitious. And overall, I think Hayden Love did a brilliant job with this one. It's definitely one of the mo more unique worlds I've come across since I started my booktube channel. So definitely worth checking out. On spot number five, we have a classic, which is not something I often read. And while this isn't fantasy, it is about a person that turns into a massive bug. <laughs> So if that's not fantastical, then I don't know what it is. Well, it's probably just symbolic, but that's gonna be Metamorphosis by Franz Kafka. This is a short novella, it's like 80 pages, and I probably read it with a friend of mine that lives in Copenhagen. Now, if you enjoy themes of like mental health, especially in depression, then I would definitely recommend this one. I think Kafka is a brilliant writer, and there's so many interesting themes in this one. On spot number four, we have The Dragon Key of Bird, the first book in the Rainwell Chronicles. Yes, I am continuing the realms of Elderlings, and I've heard from almost everyone that this series, this quartet, is the weakest in this world or yeah in the realm of the elderlings now dragon keeper this book is definitely the weakest start to a new series set in this world but i still had a great time with this one i don't really understand the hate yet but then i went on goodreads and i read the review for book number two and the top review there is from patrick leo and he literally states that book two is the worst book he's read by robin hobby i think he gave it one star so i'm really worried about book two now but the dragon keeper in typical robin hobby fashion it has beautiful writing it has compelling characters and as always the characters go through so much mental trauma it's what is robin hobbs deals with just torturing characters mentally <laughs> i don't know but yeah i'm actually kind of looking forward to continuing this one i'm hoping to continue in february and i'll definitely be reading this whole series this year on spot number three we have jade shards by fonda lee now this is a short story collection it's four short stories i think they're around 20 to 30 pages each and they basically just fill in some little gaps that weren't covered in the green bone saga so yeah you have to have read the green bone saga first but yeah sorry this is only the last jacket i have the novel in my bedroom but yeah if you have read the green bone saga then this is definitely a high recommend you can probably read it in one sitting because it's that short and it definitely adds quite a lot of value and it just allows you to get back into this amazing world that Fonda lee has crafted I loved it. I definitely think that Fonda Lee has proven that she's able to write like these long epic stories But she's also able to write stories that are short and still really really emotionally impactful Definitely glad I read this one. Then on spot number two is a book I finished this morning and I started yesterday Loved it and I usually don't read short story collections But it's interesting that in top three we have two short story collections So maybe I should read more short literature, but that is gonna be Seasons of Albadon by Ellen Marge and Christopher Warman Now this is a self-published short story collection that came out four years ago and I've heard about different booktubers that read this, this short story collection over the years but didn't really know much about it but yeah I was reading Speaking Bones which is like 1300 pages on Kindle and I just needed a break I just needed to read something that was shorter so I just started reading this one and I loved it I loved it so so much. Now, is Season of Albadon the most revolutionary, groundbreaking piece of literature that has come out in the past 100 years? Definitely not. But there's many things I loved about this one. But this is a grim kind of fairy tale world we're set in. And, and as I said, we have four different short stories that are technically independent from each other, but I think they just nail this vibe. The fairy tale vibe, it feels like something familiar, but it also feels very, very fresh because there's some interesting, unique twist on all the different stories. But the other thing that I found so riveting and interesting is that the first story, we follow some characters, and then the second story starts, and this is a new story with new characters. But in story number two, we have a very, very slight overlap where we actually meet a character from the first story. That character makes an appearance in story number two and doesn't have like a massive role but does impact story number two and when story two is done the same thing happens in story number three where we can follow new characters in the same world but something that has happened in story number two does have an impact on the third story and the same as well with the fourth story so it's kind of like reading one big story with four different povs but also what happens in each story is very very different i just found a concept so interesting and it's pulled off 
perfectly. I would highly recommend Season of Albadon, and I will definitely be reading the second book that's come out, which I think is a standalone or also a short story collection. And on spot number one, we have Oathbringer by Brandon Sanderson. Now, I've made a full spoiler-free and spoiler-filled review, so I just recommend checking that out. But yeah, I did have one major issue with this one, and that was just the pacing. I mean, this book is massive. I think it's the longest book I read in my whole life, if you don't count the Bible. But yeah, Storm Archive is definitely now one of my favorite series of all time. The character arcs are incredible. The flashbacks are so, so compelling, and Sanderson is truly, truly building something great with this series. So yeah, definitely would recommend the my archive if you haven't started yet. So those are the 10 books I read so far this year and I'll probably make a wrap up whenever I read around 10 books. Now if you want to know all the books I would love to read this year then I would highly recommend checking out this video. Thank you so much for watching to the end of this video. Now, if you want to support what I do here, then I do have a Patreon. Now, a reason why I created a Patreon was to find a new way to reinvest to the channel because basically since I created my Patreon, I spent around 100% of my earnings to hire an editor to do a couple of videos for me a month. Now, since creating my Patreon, an editor has done more than 20 videos for me on my channel, so it makes a huge difference. Now, if you join my Patreon, you will also get some benefits. For example, you'll get a name in my videos like these guys. You'll also be able to join the exclusive Viking book club where every month we read one book together and you might be the one to put the book forward. This month we're reading this book and next month we're reading this book. You also get to vote on my next read, get access to exclusive videos like a wrap up or even book reviews and so much more. But this is totally voluntary but all support is much appreciated.